Hey there, my insect nerds. Welcome back to my insect nerd podcast. Um, if you haven't joined me before, my name is Zara Braden and I do vlogs about animals and insects. And I know my blog, my vlog, or vlog rather, is called The Insect Nerd and my vlog is called The Insect Nerd. Um, but that's only because I keep a load of insects rather than animals and I'm very passionate about insects and entomology and that is why I have decided to call myself The Insect Nerd. But I still want to do animal stuff. But welcome, and if you haven't seen my previous stuff, then go and have a look. Um, but today we were going to be um, bleh, 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 sorry. Today we are going to be talking about um, stick, um, leaf insects today. Um, so I have done a video on this before. Um, it was sort of a very short one, and it was a very long time ago when I sort of just sort of sort of sort of when I started out um, doing these videos, and I feel maybe I could do a bit of a more in depth video today for you. Um, so today we're going to be, sort of go over leaf insects, um, three different types of leaf insects. Um, there are a load more. Um, there are actually about 50 different types of leaf insects in the world. However, I only have, um, I have technically two types of them, but I have kept the other type um, as well, but I currently don't have those um, with me. Um, so I'm just going to talk um, a little a bit more in depth about them. Um, I really like leaf insects. Um, I'm a phasmid person, so stick and leaf insects are really great. I love all insects, but um, I've been keeping phasmids for a long time, so they are my speciality. Um, and I, I think they, they make really good first insects, really, especially stick insects for people. But we're not going to talk about stick insects now. Um, I, I want to sort of talk about leaf insects. So as, as I've just said, there's 50 different species of them. Um, I'm going to talk about three today. So the three I'm going to talk about are Philium filisum, Philium tolbanese, I think it's pronounced like that, and Philium giganteum. So Philium, I will talk more about um, sort of scientific names another time. And I did do the sort of video of um, the um, insect orders, um, which is a bit different to scientific naming, but it's sort of the way how people, sort of the way people group insects. But um. I did do it, but unfortunately I wasn't happy with it, so I want to start that one again. But I thought I would talk about phasmids because it's just fantastic and I couldn't wait, basically. <laughs> so excited for this video. Um, so the first one, the first insect I don't um, have personally with me, um, but I'm going to show a picture up there for you. So, yeah, it's quite weird actually because I'm doing this video and I can't see the fi picture because I haven't, ed I mean, you know, I, I'm just sort of pointing so the first time and doing it, but anyway, sorry. Um, so the first one, Philium filisum, are from tropical forests in the Philippines. Um, now these are the most sort of common leaf insects you find um, in the in the trade, really. You find them everywhere. Um, compared to stick insects, I would say they're still quite costly, um, and but you, they are still very lovely compared to other leaf insects. So they are sort of the smallest type of leaf insects as well. So the female reaching seven centimeters um, and the male about maybe five to six centimeters. Um, the males are always a bit smaller than the females. Um, we go girls, we go, that's how we roll. Um, and how these particular species of leaf insects can be identified is by the um, underneath um, the underside of the abdomen they have like a brown smudge they don't always have that but it's sort of a most common way of telling um, and also um, I'm gonna go over this in uh, insect anatomy don't worry but there's something called the coxa and the coxa basically is a rounded part of the arm so just imagine I know I'm not a leaf insect hang on let me get one out um, 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 um. so the coxa is basically I don't really have a big enough insect to show you. Oh, excuse the mess on the tank. I just, I'm just, I was just doing some cleaning. So the coxa is um, sort of the rounded bit that connects the leg to the body. You can't really see it. They're too tiny. Um, but yeah, basically, um, it's the rounded, a rounded bit on the leg. I mean, so it's a rounded bit attached to the top of the leg, sort of a rounded sphere attached. Basically, it's quite hard to explain, sorry. I'm getting myself tongue-tied, it's really irritating me. Um, so the coxa is the thing that connects the leg to the body, and it's at the top of the leg. Um, I will sort of do some diagrams, and basically the, the coxa is yellow normally, um, if it's a filium filisum. If, if, if there's no yellow then, it, it most likely isn't a filisum filisum. 
Philiam, Philisum. Philiam, Philisum. I'm sorry, I, I, I apologise. I do get very tongue tied. Um, but yes, yeah, so they are sort of the most common species. Um, it. Sort of in general, um, with leaf insects, the male is always smaller and can fly and has a nice slender abdomen. Whereas the female um, has a nice rounded abdomen, can't fly, has shorter antennae. Females have long, um, males have longer antennae than the females. Um, so yeah, I just sort of want to go general on there. Um, so those are they are lovely leaf insects and i would start with them their temperature requirements are 25 to 30. um all leaf insects sort of have not all but you, you know some these leaf insects that i'm talking about do have similar temperature rate uh, i'm sorry i'm losing the world to live here um i'm joking um yeah they they have a certain temperature range obviously leaf insects i think i feel i have a more um temperature and humidity um, base whereas stick some stick insects most actually um, um, don't really need too much humidity to be red obviously temperature especially during this winter needs to be um, maintained for stick insects but leaf insects generally have similar temperature and humidity needs not always but these ones have um, these particular species I'm talking about have particular have sort of similar care needs if you will um, yeah so I would start with them if you if you want because their temperature is about 25 to 30 degrees humidity i would say 60 above i would spray every day um i will talk about enclosures after i talk about all the different species otherwise i'll get confused this is the one behind me and yes i've left it open but leaf insects are not very fast they're very lazy so um as long as you don't leave it open all the time obviously you don't want them escaping it's fine um so you know i'm i, I really wanted to show you but i don't have philly philly some with me but however are you ready you stay the next one is um philium tolbanese and i absolutely love these and i'm not sure if i pronounced that right i do apologize um as i said i i, I do get quite tongue-tied but I'm, I'm i'm familiar with the spelling um and the species are fantastic they are the sort of most colorful species um, so they are identified by the females are normally different colours, not always, so um, they are known though, the females can be in different colours such as yellowy, I've got a yellowy golden one here actually, just a minute, I scooped that one out actually, um, like she's sort of the only one I have that's sort of yellowy um, golden, can you see? Yeah, so she's adorable, I love her, I love all of them, I love all my insects, I have males as well um but yeah she is sort of golden ish um you can get fee only the females tend to be um different colors male tolbanese are always green um female um i mean tolbanese are not known to have these two sort of brown dots sometimes they can be see-through sometimes they're not um on the end of their abdomen um they are actually fairly easy to look after um I would say sort of similar temperature needs to, um, sorry, similar um, temperature needs to philium, philium, philisum. Um, they are fantastic to keep, fantastic to watch. Um, I love the different, they also have sort of lovely sort of kind of patterns. You can't really see. Oh, I'll take some photos on Instagram for you, but there's some sort of nice wavy patterns on the abdomen. Um, so these sort of grow to a bit bigger. Um, I would say the females grow to, they can grow to about eight centimeters, eight to nine centimeters, um, whereas the males will probably be seven or eight centimeters. It really depends, but they are slightly bigger species than, um, than Philium, Philium, Philisum. Um, yeah, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I will show you another one of them. So also while I'm on the topic of um, so can you see, you can't really, because they are fairly young still, they're only sort of stage four or five. Um, so they're not adults yet. Um, they're quite young. I don't have any adults at the moment, so you probably won't be able to see, but she's got shorter antennae. Yeah, she's got really short antennae and a rounded abdomen. So you can sort of tell, I think you can sort of tell fairly early with leaf insects whether they're going to be female or male or not. 
uh, especially with um, Philium giteri um, gigantea, but we will go to that in a minute. Um, yeah. So next, oh, sorry, oh, it's locking into things. Um, yeah, I just want to show you a male. So I, all my males are really tiny at the moment. Um, just a second. Uh, it's hard to get them off the leaf sometimes. So um, you can't really see the antennae here because it's not fully developed yet. But this leaf insect has more of a slender abdomen. So I, I, I think it's going to be a, a, a male because it's sort of, it's quite clinched, clinched in its abdomen. Whereas the females is quite round, it's quite voluptuous, if you will. Um, and then you can see the dots here as well. Um, I really like the little dots because sometimes they come in different ways. They're either see-through or dark and they're a fantastic species, fantastic. All leaf, spe uh, all leaf insect species are amazing, but Tolbanese are my favourite. I've got, I've got to be honest here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's lovely male. Um, so that's um, the sort of Philium Tolbanese. Um, the next one, which is one of my other favourite, I mean, they're all my favourites, okay? I, I do have a favourite, and that is the Tolbanese, but the Gitarium, Philium Gitarium are amazing. Um, so the Philium Gitarium, I've only got two of these. Um, they are very hard to look after, that's why. I did have a few, but unfortunately, due to winter and equipment breaking down, I had a few deaths, and I'm very upset. And you have to be very patient with these things, I must say. Um, otherwise... Yeah, if you're not patient, then you're not going to be able to look after them. Um, so I am going to get a... So I want, I'm going to show you my first one, which is the crippled one. Um, and unfortunately, she had a bad shed. She shed very badly and she twisted her abdomen. But she's doing really well. Uh, it's just her growth is not going to be... Um, just a second. Her growth is not going to be as... Uh, let me get her out first and then I'll finish what I'm saying. Sorry. Her growth is not going to be as... Um, perfect and um amazing she's not going to come out like a you know a fully grown oh sorry had a little hair on my nose from stroking my cat earlier <laughs> um yeah so she's as you can see she's very she's very sort of badly injured and it's very sad um some people do um tend to end its misery but i think she's fine she does really well she wanders around she's not on the floor she's actually wanders higher than all the other leaf insects and she's very strong and she might not she might all she might not be the perfect shaped leaf insect but she's done very well for herself um considering she she said she shed three times successfully with my help but she's still done it and she is still going and she might not live the full leaf insect life but she's done so well and you know our, our job as animal um lovers and insect lovers um, and as people who love our pets is to prolong life and help them out obviously if they're in pain it's different but I'm not going to go into that but she's she's fine she's clearly not in pain she's wandering she's walking she's doing her best to survive um, but she's the abdomen's not supposed to be like that I'm going to talk about insect injuries in another video but I just I just wanted to literally briefly show you um, unfortunately she's um, injured but I have another gitarium feeling gitarium Gigantia, sorry. Philium gigantia, leaf insect. Um, I do have some other photos on my Instagram, some old ones of from um, a long time ago. Um, so you can have a look at those um, for more idea of shape. But I'll get the other one out. And that one will still give you a small idea of shape. But um, she's not quite old enough to sort of go, you know, um, to really see the true fantastic shape of a Philium gigantium, gigantia. Philium gigantia leaf insect. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, look, you can see this beautiful shape here. So these actually, there's not really many males of these. So these Philium giganteas are mostly female. Some people have claimed to have um, seen males or kept males, um, but I'm not sure if that's true. And it is very rare to find them. Um, in the wild as well, it's rare to find them. So um, these are very rare and it's quite hard to get hold of these. Not as hard as it used to be. Um, but it is quite hard to get um, 
hold of these because they are um, they are very hard to keep mainly because their humidity needs are about, are about sort of 80 percent and as nymphs they are very weak and raising nymphs is hard once you get them past a certain stage so they are okay um hopefully um she will be all right um but i want to get some more and hopefully i can grow them to an adult and you guys will see um yeah philium digeriums are very hard to take care of and i haven't yet raised them to adults but i am going to so yeah i think i'm getting there touch word i'm sorry very superstitious oh sorry my cat just jumps like she's behind the camera she just jumped but yeah they're philium digeriums um, and there's only females and how they produce is parthenogenically so they can do it without a male um, and they still will hatch but it would just take a lot lot longer um, so their eggs normally take about 12 months to hatch um, but yeah they um, it might take a bit longer if they're it will actually take a bit longer because most of them are just female um, so they won't be producing with a mate so therefore it will take longer much longer um, but yeah, may, um, in terms of um, Philium tolbanes and Philium filisim, their eggs take about four to six months. But again, if it's pathogenic, it might take longer. And it depends on the weather. If you haven't got enough heat, they probably won't um, hatch until later. Um, I just want to say about sort of about breeding them. It's not the breeding bit that's hard. They sort of do that by themselves. <laughs> um, however, when it comes to hatching eggs, it's so hard, it's so difficult, and you have to be a very patient person. So don't give up, just keep going. Because I was like that to start. I was like, oh my god, they're not gonna hatch, but they will. Just, just, just wait and and you know, sort of put you know the eggs, sort of put them on a heat mat if it's really cold. Um, well, yeah, put always put them on a heat mat for leaf insects. Um, I would even say in the wet in this weather, put stick and set eggs on a, a sort of a not a really high heat mat but a sort of a medium wattage maybe about 10 or 6 watts um, these guys probably need a bit higher and don't forget to spray um, you can keep them in soil um, I like I prefer to do it with kitchen roll because my eyes are so bad even with glasses um, and um, if you put them in soil sometimes they can get lost even if you put them on top of the soil sometimes they can get lost and you have to go and find them and I like to inspect my eggs and make sure they're okay and there's no mold on them so if you can't inspect an egg and it's under the soil that's going to be a big problem because that will infect the others so always make sure when you do if, if you do um use soil that you can see the eggs I however prefer to do kitchen roll um but yeah soil's good as well um sand it doesn't really give them any humidity so I really wouldn't use sand some people do suggest sand I really nah it's, it doesn't really raise too much humidity for me um well, not for me. <laughs> I mean, for leaf insect eggs. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, um, especially with paper towel, just don't spray too much, otherwise mold will form. Um, I would wait for it to dry first. Um, even if it's if you if you spray it a lot one day, and then maybe leave leave it for one day, and then spray it again. That way, the mold won't form. But yeah, that's just a little bit about breeding. I have got all of this on my website. So if you feel like you, I mean, you could always watch this video again. What can I say? amazing face like this of course you want to watch it i'm joking um but yeah there's some information on my website which i will tell you the link at, at the end um so enclosure wise oh one's escaping hang on a second enclosure wise um really you can so at the moment i am keeping different species together but i have mostly tolbanese so i've, I've only literally got two gitec gigantiums and Philium, philium tolbany so i've only got two types of species and i'm going to move them into a different tank as they age because i don't want them to interbreed so if you do keep them as nymphs um together um and they're different species that's fine but remember to remove them um when they're older so they don't interbreed especially if you have males in your tank um and also some some leaf insects especially philium gitarium when they're older so i'm going to move uh, my philium gitarium females um when they're i mean the one with the twisted abdomen is actually quite docile so she's fine it really depends on their uh, personality as well uh some people will be like personality leaf insects don't have personality they do um yeah it depends on their personality um but i would say um mostly when they're fully staged adults 
Um, giant leaf insects are huge. They are about 10 to 11 centimeters, about this on your hand. Um, I know a lot of friends that have had, had them, so they are huge. So I would suggest, honestly, um, as they do get older, um, they can become, there has been research by scientists um, that actually they can be cannibalistic. Even some Taiwanese can. Um, don't keep too many of them together. I have a big tank, so that's fine. But if you only have a small tank and you're just starting out um, keeping leaf insects, um, I would only keep maybe five or six and then sort of work your way up. Um, yeah. In terms of enclosure, um, you can see mine's pretty swell. Um, <laughs> behind me, I have a tank. And yes, there's rubbish on it, but I was clearing it out today and I've been a bit of a rush. Normally there isn't rubbish on it. I have a light box up here. So that's, it's got nice sort of light, daylight, not, don't have too strong wattage of light because otherwise it will burn your leaf insects and they will shrivel up. Um, and I've also got some soil, so you can either do bioactive um, setup, which I will go through. I do that for my frog, so I'll go through it another time. Um, or you can just put soil in it. I literally just put soil in it because sometimes bioactive is quite expensive. Um, but you can you literally just clean it out every three to four weeks. Um, and I've put my soil and I've got sphagnum moss here. So sphagnum moss is very cool because it helps um, with humidity. It increases it. Um, I put it at the bottom though. Don't put it on the food plants because um, yeah, it would just get in their way really and they get tangled up in it. Um, in terms of enclosure size, a vivarium always, unless you live in a hot country um, and it's, if, you know, unless it's the temperature required for them, so 25 to 30, I think is actually all right for them. Um, I would say a bit higher for dietariums. Um, I've only got two of those and the temperature is mostly 28 anyway, but yeah. Um, I So vivariums are better for people who um, live in colder countries. Um, and I just like them because they're smart. And to be honest, they keep humidity in, whereas nets are really useless at that. So actually, yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't even keep them in a net. Don't bother. Some people do, but I don't like the fact that because all the humidity just goes out. Um, it doesn't get kept in because it's, you know, it's solid. Whereas something like a net would let out all the humidity. So this is a good way of keeping humidity in. Um, and yeah, soil. Soil's great. I would get sort of this, you can get like spidery soil, for, especially for spiders, but it can be for sick insects as well. Or cocoa soil, um, which I also use for my frogs. So yeah, you kind of put that on the bottom. And I've got a heat mat. You can't see it because it's under the soil, but I've got a heat mat underneath. I'd say maybe mine's near, near, nearish a window. So I've got quite a high wattage, not too high, but sort of medium to high, I would say. So 14 watts. Um, and then it's it's kind of yeah so it's sort of underneath the soil um and then in terms of food plants so all of these eat things that are quite similar um so bramble blackberry rose are really good ones um some i mean some um insects eat obviously more tropical things some even eat mango leaves however we don't live um some people don't live in um some people can't get access to that because obviously um, if you live in England like me, then you can't get things like mango leaves and stuff. But if you are in another country, they might eat something like that. But if you live here, the best thing is bramble, um, blackberry and rose. They love that. Um, I would say when you get nymphs, don't keep them in something like this. So this tank is about 30 times, no, 45 times 45 times 45, which is, is great for a group. Um, you know, even bigger group, I would say, um, go bigger, maybe 30, 60, no, sorry, 60, 60, 60 or something like that. Big is always better when it comes to tanks and stuff like that. Um, but when they're nymphs, maybe go for something a little bit smaller. Um, I do have very tiny ones in here, so they can sort of manage. Um, but I have put logs and I've got a lot of food plants, so if they fall, they can sort of hang on to. Um, they don't really tend to fall though, luckily. But yeah, just sort of when they're nymphs as well, um, when they're really small and they're, when they're really small, normally they're black. Um, um, Dietariums tend to be brown, brownie black. Um, I would sort of tear the leaves, so just sort of tear them like this. So that helps them 
to access food easier because their mandibles and maxilla are not as strong when they're younger. So I would just rip that up a little bit. I'd rip as many leaves as you can. You don't have to do every spot on every leaf, but do it as much as you can so they can get them out most most out of feeding. Um, what else? Is there anything else? Behaviour wise, they are very docile. Um, they are lovely to keep. Um, I do love stick insects, but some species, um, especially if you don't really like things rushing at you, some species of stick insects are like, um, yeah, so they are very calm and docile and very easy to handle. However, they are very delicate, especially as nymphs. So I would really be careful with them. I have got a nymph care video on, on here, so have a look at that. But yeah, that's that's generally it, really. I've done housing, I've done food plants. Um, yeah, and also just some spray for humidity anyway. So like I have got this, but spray, I would spray them every day. Um, yeah, so make sure you've got like a nice, decent setup. Um, yeah, if you want to read more about it, or I've got another species on, on there as well that I haven't got on my website. Um, and if you want to uh, read about sick and as well, which my new page is up on there now, then go to www.theinsectnerd.co.uk. And on Instagram, if you want to see what I'm up to, because I'm posting constantly insect photos, I can't get enough of it, then follow me at theinsectnerd97. And thank you very much for uh, watching. And don't forget, please press that red subscribe button, please. If you want to see more of me and my insects and animals, then yeah, um, press the subscribe button. But thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. Have a nice Christmas. Um, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed this video.